Hello, Yakri here with another Warframe video. So today I want to just take a look at how Ember plays right now and kind of what her power level is before her upcoming rework because understandably most people feel that this power level is quite low and we would like her rework to be higher in overall power. And I'm, I'm not 100% convinced that that's kind of the direction it's going right now with what DE has showed off from in the um, dev stream. So let's just take a look at what you can do now. Now I've got level 57 Arid Gunners, Arid, sorry, <laughs> Arid Gunners uh, queued up for this. And they have uh, about the same EHP as the level 200 Butchers in the video. They actually have a 1,000 more EHP at 113,000. So uh, pretty fair, pretty fair matchup, right, for current Ember. Let's uh, see how fast I can kill them in a couple of different ways. So first off, I'm gonna actually try using her biggest asset, actually the Ignis. Uh, I've modded it out for pure heat damage. And uh, this weapon is really amazing. Just boom, obliterates them, all right, instantly all dead. All right, these guys, um, let's see. I gotta, I gotta drop off the cliff here really quick. Let's try Let's try how it stands up uh, without the, the bonus damage. It's still gonna be pretty good, but uh, oh, no, it's kind of, it's a bit slower. Just, you know, let's just try this again with uh, with the bonus damage from Ember. Right? Okay, let's take a look here. Um, yeah, they're they're all gone. Okay, so uh, I, I think some of you have probably seen the dev stream. If not, you can always go uh, take another look at that and see how fast uh, Rebecca was killing the enemies with uh, Ember's abilities. And note that in that rework that they proposed, they did not mention any sort of damage boosting capability for Ember for weapons. Now, this is limited, it's niche. There's a lot of problems with this being Ember's like one good thing. However, it is quite strong. Um, let's take a look at how fast she kills enemies. Uh, and this is, a, this is a pretty, I should actually do this first. This is a pretty niche build, I would say. Uh, I think you can you can form this a lot to make it better. Um, it's still not like totally terrible, but you probably really want to like take off Blind Rage, stick on something else, form her one more time, stick some, stick uh, like, uh, what's that one called? Uh, power drift in the Exilus slot, and you have something really close to this, a little bit less uh, power strength, but close. Um, and that would be more reasonable. You can also use the, that uh, Arcane for kit guns to snapshot abilities with current Ember, um, which is actually like really, really good. Uh, it can help you achieve even closer to this level of power with more energy efficiency on your ultimate if you do that. Uh, I don't want to show it for this video because it's kind of awkward, but in terms of like peak build, that is actually a key item for her because she is so good at only using a couple abilities infrequently to really hit optimal damage. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's let's activate her ultimate here, and uh, I'm just gonna. I'm actually not even using utilizing growing power. I feel like that's you know, only fair since I've got a little bit of a unreasonable build here. Um, so uh, we let her ult. We're gonna let her ult ramp up in damage. I'll do it again with the ult not ramped up as well, but uh, thought I might might start with off with this. Oop, my bad. That could have been a lot faster. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And at this point, of course, it's draining double energy, so it is running out quite quickly uh, with my poor power efficiency. But uh, if you have a Trinity in your party, for example, or someone else who gives energy, you can actually keep this up pretty effectively for a while. Um, oh, look, I managed to kill all of them. Uh, and that was quite fast. If I recall correctly, I think that's a little bit faster than uh, they were killing enemies with Ember's boosted abilities, or reworked abilities, supposedly, hopefully boosted abilities, in the uh, dev stream. So that's, that's kind of my concern. I feel like maybe she's not getting enough raw damage without this enormous damage amp that her two has. Now, you may note that I didn't use my other two abilities. Um, that's because they're bad. Um, so let's take a look at this. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, it's bad. Uh, there's like an asterisk on that. However, let's uh, let's pump these guys up and we'll, we'll like drop this. Ah, fuck, that didn't really get line up right. Let's just drop. Let's just drop a couple of these. I mean, I did blow those guys off the edge, but uh, it doesn't really do any damage. The nice thing is that if you shoot through it, it, the damage bonus to your weapon is multiplicative, and it's like at the end of other multipliers, and it's it's quite high um, as far as I can tell. Uh, so it's it's it ends up being like a pretty good example. Uh, I will try something a little bit gnarlier uh, in a bit, but let's take a look at her fireball now. Um, so let's like boom, hit these, tap these guys a little bit, get me that growing power buff, charge up fire. Ah, it's only half charged. That's come on, it's really awkward. All right, let's do that again. There we go. It's it's actually not that bad. It's surprisingly good. It's the the charge is too slow. It's like too awkward to fucking use. Um, too much of its damage is in the initial blast, and not enough is in the AOE that's constantly burning for it to really be a strong ability. But you know, it's it's all right. So. Uh, where, where does this leave us? I think she's actually decent against the level of enemies that they were showing her against right now uh, in that dev stream. 
So let's let's crank the enemy level up to something a little bit more reasonable. Um, let's go with 110. I feel like that's like a good kind of midpoint for le like the third round of our, uh, third round of sorties and uh, arbitration enemies are going to hit this uh, level often. Although I don't think Saren or sorry Ember is ever really going to be a top choice for arbitrations. Um, well, I guess there's something to be argued with her new little heat uh, DR ability. She will actually be better in those scenarios. Um, and she's actually decent right now because you're, I you know, well, some of your gun damage amp uh, does pay off in arbitrations. And it, this this is an AoE, right? If you look in the top right corner, we've got that flash accelerant bonus. That affects your allies, and it's a really strong bonus. Uh, and that part of the, oh, whoops, that part of the ability uh, is not, uh, like, negatively impacted by... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for here? Not using a heat weapon, right? It doesn't matter if you're using a heat weapon or not. So let's like just knock these guys back. The you know, last time I tested this is well, not knocking them back that far. I'm kind of disappointed because it's a little awkward. Okay. Um. All right. Flash accelerant isn't on these guys. Let's try this out again. All right. There we go. That's more like it. That's because they're already burning, stunned, probably. Okay, yeah. So, level 110 enemies, a little bit hard to deal with, but you can take them out pretty quickly. Uh, the reason it's actually as good as it is is because um, of how hunters muni hunter munitions works. I might, might, might as well explain this really quickly while I'm here. Um, so, hunter munitions, right, 30% on crit to apply a slash proc. That slash proc is equal to the total damage you do on your critical. This weapon has like quite a good amount of critical damage, even though it doesn't crit that frequently. Now, here's the thing. Ember's second ability, Accelerant, it multiplies uh, fire damage by 6.55 times. Um, wait, I haven't actually picked up a thing, so it's higher than that. Sorry. Uh, let's, let's look at that again. Uh, and it's going to be a little higher if you utilize growing power as well. 7.8 times, okay? And it's adding 156% bonus fire damage. And that extra fire damage, ah, uh, shit. If I quote this wrong, um, people are going to think I'm an idiot, but uh, I think that is bonus damage similar to Rhino Roar. It's uh, it's only to weapons, uh, it's only heat damage, but uh, it does multiply it, I believe, by, by 2.56 times. Uh, that's what the 156% bonus equates to. So it's quite strong. Now, here's the thing. With 100 munitions, it's going to take your damage... Uh, plus 156% more fire damage, kind of like having an elemental mod, because that's actually how elemental mods work in the first place. Um, then it's going to, no, no, it is more like an elemental mod, not like Rhino Roar, which is better than a base damage boost, but not as good as Rhino Roar, I think. That might be right. Anyhow, the 7.8 times is a total multiplier, similar to Ban Banshee's damage multiplier bonus she gets on Sonar. Um, so it's going to be, you're going to have that 156% bonus, then you're also going to have that multiplied by 7.8 times. Then whatever that damage is on a critical hit, that is going to be the base for your slash proc. So end result is enormous slash procs. Enemies with huge amounts of armor really quickly die. If I actually had 3x corrosive projection, um, these guys would be going down a lot, a lot, a lot faster because they are very armor dependent for their tankiness. Okay, so that's um, something else to throw in, uh, that the Butchers are a little less armor dependent uh, for how tanky they are. They just don't have a very, they don't get an insane armor multiplier like these guys, so armor strip is actually less effective on them, so. Um, I have to do a lot of math to work out how much of an impact that makes, but yeah. So, my concern is pretty much this. The new Ember rework does not look like it has a ton of damage. It removes her out of line of sight capability that she has, what, what little of it she has, right? So, it removes your ability to do this, and this, which is actually very strong, right? This is like a valuable thing to be able to do. Obviously, I'm not killing these guys because we're still we still have the level 110s here. But if these guys were the lower level, level 57s. What the build from the rework is effective against, um, I would be doing plenty of damage. They would already be dead, right? And I can keep myself hidden out of line of sight, right? That makes you more powerful because it makes you uh, able to play in a admittedly like sneaky, cowardly way uh, that will uh, make you better at killing things, make you less likely to die in high-level missions. You can protect yourself using it. And you can also hit more enemies with it, meaning you can kill more things at once if you are powerful enough to kill things. So they're restricting her line of sight, which I understand why they're doing it because last time they reworked her they completely failed at their stated objective of making sure she wouldn't just clear maps she still clears maps just like she did before you kind of just refresh your ult occasionally and build for more range than before that's that's what happened really uh, it didn't change a lot in how ember functions uh just made her kind of awkward in my opinion so this actually solves that issue. You will no longer be able to just like mindlessly clear the map around you with Ember, but that means that she ought to have some crazy destructive potential to compensate for this because most frames, like, like I think um, 
Oh, what's which which one is the thing, what I'm thinking of? It's not Gara. I want to say Gara, but it's not. It's the uh, Blood Frame. Uh, Garuda, yeah, there we go. Another G name. So Garuda, it can hit incredibly hard, just incredibly hard in a really big area. And even she actually can hit enemies behind cover. But the thing is that her ability is kind of awkward and time consuming to use. And making an ability line of sight only targeted achieves the same thing, right? Um, it, it ta you have to actually see a group of enemies, aim at them, and fire off your ability. Now, I'm not 100% going to say that that's like a thing we shouldn't have more of in Warframe because some of these AOE frame, super AOE frames like Equinox are extremely kind of overpowered, um, and game balance is pretty distorted in this game. Um, but the, the problem is, is that this does make Ember weaker, right? It impacts how much effect she can have on a mission in a negative way. Um, and so sh I would like to see her have some serious guns to make up for that. And visually, her abilities look nice. And style-wise, they're mostly good. I do have some criticisms on that in a second. Um, but I just hope that they're planning to upturn the numbers before she's released because they don't look high enough. So, all right, that's 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 my main point I wanted to make here. And I've also got this as evidence of what Ember was like from before, right? Okay, so there's another thing I want to bring up. And that is that her two in the rework is super fucking boring. And I, I know I've actually, I'm pretty sure in my last Ember video I made, I asked for most of the shit they have put in this rework, including a straight DR, a toggle, or something similar to that. Um, however, I would like to have some actual gameplay associated with it. Okay? So what, I, what do I mean by that? So for example... If they ramped up her power strength, how much shit she could kill, um, from what they displayed in the dev stream by including her two, her current two, that multiplies fire damage that enemies take, um, roll that into her uh, her damage amp, her damage resistance toggle, excuse me, I think I've been calling it an amp, but it's a DR, um, damage reduction toggle, and roll work that in with that heat gauge, right? The closer you are to redlining and exploding, the more bonus damage you get. And that way we have a reason to not just dump it out and just like kind of it be just a reason to spend energy to keep our uh, damage reduction go right because that's kind of what it looks like it's going to be right now and i it'd be great if there was some interaction and some kind of skill where like if you get shot too much unexpectedly because you were riding close to the edge to deal more damage it could explode resulting in you potentially dying that's that's interesting gameplay right there that's some stuff you can play with and in turn her three her new three is basically a even less interesting version of her current third ability uh, her current third ability is you use a blast wave and you create a ring of fire and you shoot through that and you get a large damage boost when you do okay her new third ability is you create a blast wave and that's it it just doesn't fucking do anything else the damage doesn't look impressive the effect isn't impressive and all it seems to be worth doing is dumping energy uh, heat out of your heat gauge which also just doesn't feel that meaningful because there's not enough interaction with it so Add some interaction to it. Um, ideally, her third would do something a little bit more interesting. Maybe it's a stronger damage nuke, uh, perhaps. Um, maybe they said something about it armor stripping. If it does that, I guess that's fine, right? Because that's one of her big problems, heat damage, not good versus armor. Um, so, you know, if she can strip armor and they're just kind of adding armor stripping to a lot of frames anyway, it would make sense. Um, something like, like nice armor melting, that could be that could be reasonable. Or if it has some other sort of secondary effects, so there's a reason to ever use it. Ideally, ideally, I would like to see a situation where you want to be at high heat most of the time, but maxing out on heat is bad and minimizing on heat is bad because you don't get the maximum amount of damage or maybe even the maximum amount of DR. And so then... We throw in her three. Give her three a useful ability that makes you want to activate it, right? Not just for dumping heat. So that you have to have this situation where you'd like to activate your three, but you don't want to lose heat. And you have to decide which one is more valuable to you. Uh, that, that gives us some more opportunity for interesting gameplay decisions. Her, her fireball also, I feel like, is super awkward. But the change to animations, and I think they sped up the wind-up time, if I remember correctly, kind of fixes that. But... Yeah, it's kind of an awkward ability. I wish that the wind-up charge effect was actually gone. I think it's maybe a mistake. Um, and I'd rather see something that the, the, the visuals reworked too. Like, if you could throw out the fireball and it was actually very strong and had a small area of effect, however, um, 
or maybe we could leave the charging in, despite the fact that I personally don't like it. And maybe you could, if you charge it up, it creates a puddle of lava that deals very high damage to enemies that stand inside of it and slows them or sticks them to their to the ground for a brief period um, while melting the shit out of them. Maybe it reduces their armor while they're in the little puddle, so it's like stacked armor reduction from multiple abilities. That could be cool. All right, there you go. Uh, I've managed to drone on for way too long, but at least I feel like I did an okayish job of front-loading the <laughs> useful information. Thank you all for watching, and I'll make another video when Ember's rework comes out.